Hello everyone, welcome to today's snapshot. Today's snapshot is going to be on HashiCorp Vault. So specifically the topic will be uh, Vault authentication with Active Directory. This is a snapshot and we're going to build on foundational knowledge um, that is required for this snapshot. So if, you're, if you already know what Vault is, how to use it um, and understand it, this is a great place for you to get up to speed on this topic. Uh, because that's assumed knowledge. My name's Patrick Carey, and I'm going to be delivering this snapshot today. We're going to cover how to configure Vault for authentication with Active Directory, how to get Active Directory groups um, and apply policies in Vault to those groups. Um, we're also going to cover how to create a group and apply policy across more than one identity provider. Let's get started. This is what a workflow looks like for most uh, logins with Vault. Um, so we have a user in this case, it's going to request access to Vault, provide its credentials. Vault will securely pass those credentials to the identity provider, which will verify that identity for us. In this case, it's Active Directory. That's what we're going to focus on today. It's going to be passed, the results going to be passed back to Vault. Um, and then Vault, if it's successful, it's going to generate a token and pass that token back to the user. That user is going to use their token for any further communication with Vault while the token is valid. Now, the important thing here is as part of that token, Vault's going to include one or more policies. These policies are the authorization mechanism within Vault that can control what that user can do in Vault. What does that mean? Vault operates on the principle of least security. So that means if I can authenticate with Vault and I don't have any policies, I really can't do anything. I can't create secrets, I can't write secrets. It's really, really limited access. Now Vault organizes itself by using um, a path-based system. Now this path-based system allows us to be really granular with who can access what path. And then on top of that, we use a CRUD-like uh, action mechanism to control what actions users can do at that path. Can they create, read, update, delete, et cetera? So if we log in, we've got no access, and then we have a few policies with our token. Those policies tell us which paths we can access and what actions we can do at that path. So it's really granular, it's secure by default, and it allows us to be tightly control what users can do what. Um, so everything must be specifically defined in a policy. Because that policy is also path-based and CRUD-based, it's really easy to write policies, and it's really easy to layer policies based on groups and users and location and things like that. Now, we have to attach these policies to something, so let's talk about what a user is in Vault. When a user logs in for the first time to Vault, we're going to create them an entity. This entity is going to have a unique ID. Here, we've got Bob Smith and his unique ID. This entity, it kind of behaves like a bucket. And within that bucket, we have aliases. The aliases are Bob Smith's uh, identity in different providers. Because Vault can have more than one provider, we can put them in this entity bucket and treat it as a single user. This makes management really easy and it allows us to you know, apply controls and permissions really easily because we're applying them to a person who might have many aliases, but we only need to apply them to that one person. We don't like have to apply them to all of the different identities and groups they might have. Because most of the customers I speak to have more than one identity provider. They might have LDAP or AD, they might have uh, GitHub, they might have, they, most of them have a, a cloud identity provider, or as well as something like GitHub we've got here from a SaaS provider or any other SaaS provider that's doing identity, such as like Okta. So all of these identities uh, are attached to a single user, and we're able to control user access with that user across multiple identity providers, which makes authorization really, really simple in Vault. And we're going to talk, we're going to show you actually more about that today. 
what does this look like in the real world and how are these policies attached and layered? So if we've got Bob Smith logging into Vault with LDAP, like here, this is gonna use that workflow we talked about earlier in one of the earlier slides. We get that verified back and then Vault's created the token and it's gonna attach policies. And here we can see we've got our entity, Bob Smith with two aliases. Because he logged in with LDAP, he's gonna get that LDAP, those LDAP policies attached. But because we're dealing with the user and not just that LDAP identity, he's also gonna get, gonna get that tester's policy because we're, that's attached to, to the entity. If he logged in with GitHub, he would get the base policy because it was a GitHub as well as the tester policy. So it's gonna give him those that consistent experience and those privileges that Bob needs to do his job, regardless of which login he uses. Now, attaching policies to entities and uh, identities as well is really good, but it doesn't scale. We need to start leveraging those groups. Most identity providers that I'm aware of have some sort of grouping mechanism. So we can attach policies to the groups and that makes it really easy because we don't need to manage those individual users. But if we've got more than one identity provider, how are we going to attach policies to the same groups across identity providers? And that's where local identity groups come in. This is a grouping mechanism that exists only within inside Vault and it's going to allow us to create a group of groups, like a super group. Um, so in this example, we've got two identity providers, one from a cloud provider, one from LDAP, and they've both got their own policies and groupings attached to them. And those users are managed in that identity provider. Users come and go as they will. But within Vault, we know that if you're dealing with payments and billing, you're probably gonna be in the accounting team so this is a really nice example of saying, any accounting secrets in Vault, we're gonna give you access with the accounting policy. And we, you're probably gonna be part of these two groups. So whichever one you're a part of, we're gonna give you access to the accounting secrets. Makes that management really, really easy because it's, it's really hard to manage policies across two different identity providers. And they're all gonna, based on like the roles, they're probably gonna need access to these accounting uh, secret information. Lastly, uh, I've been ignoring him a bit, but Bob Smith is here as well. This is really important because we don't have to just use identity groups with other groups. We can also use them with users as well and, and add Bob in here if he needs one-off access or he might not be part of these groups. Um, so we can do that as well. Now, we're all here for a demo. So let's talk about how, what we're going to demo today. First thing we're gonna do is configure Vault with Active Directory. We're gonna test our logins. Then we're gonna start leveraging groups. We're gonna attach policies to our Active Directory groups. And then lastly, we're gonna create a group across um, two, uh, two different identity providers and apply uh, a policy across them. So let's get started. Okay, I'm gonna log out here. I was just doing something there. First thing I'm going to show everyone actually is, uh, it's not part of Vault, but I'm just going to show my Active Directory. So this is really important that you guys know this is a real demo. I've got my Active Directory domain here. I've got a number of different users and I've got a number of different groups configured. I've just clicked on my alpha group here and you can see I've got 92 users in here. So. This is only an example Active Directory, but you can see already grouping gets pretty important because I'm going to be leveraging these groups. And as users are added to these groups, I don't have to worry about it as a Vault administrator. It's going to be managed by those Active Directory groups and users are added. I don't need to worry about onboarding them into Active Directory or into Vault. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enable the LDAP's uh, authentication engine within Vault. So I've now got that set up, but it's not connected to anything. So uh, I'm just going to scroll back through my history where I figured out all of the different variables that I need here. I'm not going to dive into this, 
because it's going to be different for all the different Active Directory deployments. But what I'm going to show you is that we just need to know where our Active Directory server is. We're going to configure our users and groups so that Vault can find them and be able to extract that information because we're going to need that to attach policies within Vault to the, that group information and membership. Lastly, I've just got a few uh, uh, details here to create a secure connection because it's really important that we're uh, using TLS and everything like that. We've got um, passwords in place. So this demo is going to be split between CLI and um, uh, Vault CLI and Vault GUI. So I'll try and use the GUI as much as I can, but in this example, it's really easy to show group membership and policies on the command line. I'm going to swap my tab. And the first thing I'm going to do here as a, is log into Vault as a new, as a first time as a uh, Active Directory user. So this is, um, this is me testing my, my authentication from Vault to Active Directory. I'm just going to use the CLI, do my login parameter. Oh, my, sorry, my login parameter, which is LDAP. So that's what I'm going to authenticate against. Put my username and my password from um, Active Directory, and boom, I'm logged in. I'll show you as well on the GUI. Oh, a few more typos. Fantastic. So that is how easy it is to configure Active Directory authentication with Vault. We just got to figure out a couple of those parameters against your Vault server and you're good to go. So right now I've logged in using an Active Directory user to Vault, but this user has no group memberships. That's why we saw uh, the little pop-up error on the, on the um, Vault GUI and the yellow warning here on the CLA says, I can't find any groups in Active Directory. And because of that, it has only the default policy attached. Now, this is what I was talking about. Principle of least privilege. I can't see any secrets here. I, I can't do much. I'm really limited, you know, but I do have access. So creating access is something the Vault administrator doesn't need to worry about anymore. Vault administrator only needs to worry about attaching policies to the correct groups. So let's do that now. Let's write for our group, our LDAP group called Alpha. This needs to match exactly the group name in LDAP. I'm going to attach a policy called Alpha. This policy is something that I already created. It's already in Vault. I'm not going to go into how to write policies today, just attach them. And I'm going to attach another one to my LDAP group called beta to the beta policy. You could have more than one policy here, but for this demo, I think it's easier if we just have one and we give it the same name as the group. So it's really easy to, to pair up and understand what's happening. Now I'm going to log in. I'm going to log in with a new Active Directory user called hey Holly. This, this person is a member of the beta group, so they should get the beta policy applied. Boom, there we go, fantastic. So we've got that set up. I'm gonna log in with Active Directory username again in the GUI, and I'm gonna show you that we now have access to more secret information. So this user as part of a mem uh, member of an AD group has a policy attached and more authorization within Vault. So onboarding and updating user access using Active Directory groups or LDAP groups is really, really easy. So write the policy once, apply it to everyone in the group, and we don't need to worry about it anymore. I'm going to log out here because I think that was really, really easy. Configured AD authentication, and we attached policies to groups really easily. I'm going to swap straight up to the, uh, the GUI now and show you a couple of things. I'm going to log in as the administrator. And you can see here as the administrator, there's a lot more secrets that are available within Vault. These have all been limited based on policies to those user groups and they can't see this. They've only got access to what they need. 
I'm going to show you here. I've got a couple of different auth methods enabled. LDAP, we just configured. I'm going to click on this. I can see my LDAP groups. I've got two configured. There are more than two groups in my LDAP, but I've only got two configured and they only have one policy each. No one else has any authorization within Vault. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create um, a policy that's going to apply across two identity providers. LDAP is going to be my first one, the active directory we're talking about today. My second one, I've got just local username and password within Vault. Um, I'm going to use this to represent any other identity provider. It's just easier for me to, to do it with this, but it's a representation of a, a completely separate identity provider. Within that, I have one user called Bob Smith. You might have seen him earlier in some of our slides. On my left-hand side, of this access tab of Vault, I'm going to click on Groups. You'll notice I only have one group here because the groups with, that I, we created earlier in LDAP, they don't, they're, not real, they're not groups within Vault. They're groups within LDAP managed by LDAP. I have one group here called Contractors. This contains Bob Smith from our local username and password credentials. He is not, he's a contractor, so he's not in the company active directory and we're not gonna give him that access, but he still needs to use Vault. So we've just created him a local login with Vault, but he's started a new project. His new project is working with the Delta team and the Delta team isn't using Vault yet. They're just gonna start and they need access to their own secrets as well as the transit engine. Bob, who's a contractor, he's not in Active Directory. I can't just add that group policy to that AD group. What I'm gonna to need to do is I'm gonna to need to create a local identity group in Vault and then add the Delta Active Directory group to that and the contractor group to that. And then I've just got one place to manage that access for that project. And I'm gonna attach the policy there. So let's get started. First thing to do is I've got to create that Delta group from Active Directory as a group in, in Vault. So I'm going to click Create Group on the Groups tab. I'm just going to call it Delta so I know you know what it maps to and it's easy. The type of group, it's not an internal group, it's an external group. And that means that the group is going to be managed outside of Vault in terms of adding and removing users. But when they do log into Vault, I need them to have the Delta policy, which I've created here. I'm going to create that. So I've created the group and the policy mapping, but Vault doesn't know where its members are because the members are in Active Directory. So I'm going to add an alias. And this alias is going to say, Anyone in Active Directory, which I've selected here as our authentication backend, who is a member of Delta, is going to get this policy in this group. So I'm going to create that. Fantastic. So I'm going to go, that's done. I'm going to go back to groups. I've got a Delta group. So users are managed in AD and they're going to get the Delta policy. This is the new team that's onboarding to Vault. Now the project that we're working on, they need to work with the contractors and they both need access to the transit secrets. So I'm gonna create a new group for that and attach a policy. Let's create another group. This one, I'm gonna call it transit encryption access. And this is an internal group. All of the members for this group are gonna be managed by the vault administrator in vault. I'm going to attach another policy. See what we're doing here? We're layering policies only as group access and people need the access on top of each other. Just adding little bits at a time. I'm going to add the transit encryption policy to this group. And because I'm managing this group in Vault, I need to put members in the group. My member group ID is going to be my contractors. These are my local username or password people not in active directory and i'm going to click my other group my delta group they're my active directory users i'm going to click create 
Awesome. Let's go back to groups. I've got three groups now. Let's test them out, see if this worked. I'm gonna go back to my CLI so we can see, see those uh, users logging in on the command line. This is my Active Directory user logging in through LDAP. Fantastic. He's got the default policy applied. He's also got the Delta policy applied from that new group we just created, as well as the transit encryption access. He's got that policy as well. That's my Active Directory user. Now let's check it out in the Vault GUI. See if that, see what it looks like. LDAP, what's his name? A.Shepard. I'm going to copy paste his password again. Always good to do that. Sign in. Oh, awesome. Okay, great. So my Active Directory user is part of Delta. He's got the Delta policy. He can see those secrets. He's also got the transit encryption. He can see those secrets too. He's got a, another secret engine, which we haven't seen before in the other groups. Great. Let's log out and test my contract to sign in. I'm going to run that through the CLI first and see that those policies are actually attached. Okay, fantastic. You can see here my method has changed. He's now logging in with the method user pass instead of LDAP. He's given his username and his password, which I should ask him to change. It's not very secure, but we can see his policies here. Contractor policy, default, and the new transit encryption one. Awesome. Let's check that out in the GUI. B Smith. I can type that password because it's so insecure. Oh, great. So he's got the alpha access, which must be where the contractors are storing their passwords. And he's got the transit encryption secret engine, which he needs for that new project. But he doesn't have the Delta secrets because he doesn't have the Delta policy. Okay, I think that works really well. Let's go back to our slide deck and uh, just finish up, finish up our, uh, our slides here. So you saw how quickly and easy it was to configure Active Directory access, attach policies to groups, and then create a group of groups across identity providers. This makes onboarding new users and new teams and groups so, so easy. As a Vault administrator, I don't need to worry about the AD stuff. I can just attach the policies when they're needed. People don't get access unless I've written them a policy and I've put it attached it to the user or the group. We saw how we layered policies. We can be really granular. We don't need to write a big policy for everything. We just be small and add them as required. The groups made you adding users and teams so easy. So we saw how quickly that was. We really need to leverage that. And when we have to work across identity providers, it's really easy to do. And we can put an abstraction layer on top within Vault so we don't have to interface with all of these different identity providers. We can just be really granular with our secret policy attachment. Thank you very much for your time today. Um, please let me know if there are uh, any questions, uh, reach out. Thank you.